Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set up our restoration. We're going to start the design process. As you can see on the left, we have three choices, single restoration, bridge restoration, or abutment. Let's click through each of these and talk about what choices we have. With a single restoration, we have a crown, which probably is what we do most of the time. We have an inlay or an onlay, which I try to do every time in place of a filling where possible. And then we have a veneer. Um, we also have this missing choice, which you can select and indicate over on the model over here on the right side if any of those teeth are missing, which helps you to keep the tooth numbers correct. Um, or in a bridge case, it becomes a little more important. So crown, inlay, on layer, veneer. Watch what happens when we select the bridge option. You get one more choice. You get a pontic. And the pontic essentially is the suspended tooth. So basically, between a bridge and a crown, the only difference in choices that we have here is we can indicate whether or not we're doing a, a bridge and which tooth is the suspended tooth or the pontic. And when we select over to the abutment, we have three choices here. Again, we have the missing choice. <clears throat> screw retained crown is a crown uh, that will essentially screw. The whole thing will screw into the implant. And this is for use with a tie base. Um, a multi-layer abutment is where we have a unique custom-made abutment that screws into the implant with a crown that is cemented over the top. So normally what I'd suggest, and we'll get to this down the road, when we do design a, an implant restoration, I would suggest always starting out as a multi-layered abutment. I'll explain that later on. It's not real critical that you know why, but for now I'd suggest that you always start an implant restoration as a multi-layer abutment. Toward the end, you can make the, make the switch if you want to, but it gives you a few more tools to work with in that regard. So we have crowns, um, or single restorations rather, um, a bridge or an abutment. So let's go through the crown choices. Um, a crown, generally speaking, will cover all of the biting surface of the tooth. An inlay or an onlay, um, it gets into a matter of semantics. It's all about how you define it. Basically an onlay covers most of the tooth and an inlay covers less than half of the tooth. Um, generally speaking, there are exceptions to that rule. And a veneer usually only covers the front and part of the biting edge of a front tooth. Um, so when we're setting up the restoration, it's important to know the differences between these. And again, this all comes down to communicating it with your doctor. So let's coordinate um, setting up a single crown restoration on tooth number 30 here. Um, so let's look at, at what we have here after I selected crown. We have three choices that show up. So these three choices are different in and of themselves. Biogeneric individual is a crown that the computer will design from scratch. Now the computer will take into account the teeth that are on either side in the imaging and do its best to match the occlusion and the anatomy on the tooth. But generally speaking, with the biogeneric individual choice, the computer is going to design the crown from scratch. With the biogeneric copy choice, the computer will do its best um, to replicate exactly what the tooth looked like before. So in my experience, if you have a cracked tooth or a tooth with a large failing filling of any type, um, we probably want to stay away from this biogeneric copy choice um, and generally stay with the biogeneric individual choice. That's if you have a tooth that is broken, has a large filling, um, or just doesn't look very good. Now this third choice, the biogeneric reference choice, this particular choice allows us to tell the computer we want to design the new tooth to match a different tooth. So basically the computer program when it's designing the uh, new tooth will refer um, or take reference from a different tooth. Now that could be a tooth immediately next to the tooth we're working on, it could be a tooth on the opposite side of the arch. Um, there are all sorts of choices here that we can uh, use when we're using the biogeneric reference. So we're going to start out with the most commonly used and simplest design protocol, that's the biogeneric individual. So once I've selected biogeneric individual, now we have a bunch of other choices to discuss with regard to what material is going to be used. So select manufacturer is the next option we get to discuss. Here we have a bunch of manufacturers. Generally speaking, most of us are using primarily Emacs, which is an Ivoclar Vivident product, or Vita. Um, so generally speaking, we, we would choose one of these two. 
Now, there are some great materials put out by Serona. The Serona ceramic and the Vita ceramic are essentially the same. Um, I've never used any Densify materials in my CEREC. I've never used any of these. I've used plenty of 3M, the Lava Ultimate materials, a 3M product. Cerasmart is a GC product. Um, so, but generally speaking, we'll be using one of these two materials. And I'll talk about the materials choices in a different lesson that you have, have access to. So we're going to select Ivacar Viva Dent, and then that gives me a couple of materials choices. And you can see here, we've got uh, IPS Emax, which is the most commonly used material um, with the CEREC, the Emax material. It's a very, very strong, good for just about everything. Empress um, is less strong, essentially the same color scheme as the Emax, LT, HT, and they even have multis, which is right here. Uh, multi is a multi-layered Empress block, and we'll again talk about the differences here in a minute. HelioCAD, th these are temporary um, materials. So I would be very cautious when designing a bridge that you do not tell the machine um, that we're using a temporary material. Um, the challenge that we have with the temporary materials is it changes how the machine will drill. Um, and for milling versus grinding, that's a differentiation you don't really need to know about unless you're designing a bridge and using a material um, so we'll leave it at that so once you've selected the material um, it'll automatically populate what milling device is connected to the machine so let's just review we have a crown we're doing by a generic individual we're using the Emax material which is an Ivoclar Vivident product and the milling device is already selected I'm going to go ahead and go over here and select tooth number 30 because that's the crown we'll be doing today um, after that's done, if I've made a mistake, there are a couple of things I can do. Not a big deal. I can go over here to Case Details and change this particular restoration. Um, so if I want to, I can click on this pencil and hit Edit. It'll allow me to change all of the options I just added in there, or I could delete it. Sorry, delete is right here. Um, if I want to add a restoration made out of a different material, I just go over here and change these settings. Again, with a little pencil or pen, and I can select multiple restorations. I could even add a separate material or a separate restoration that's a bridge or even an implant, so I can design them all at the same time. But for this particular restoration, if I need to change this, I have to change it over here on the right side where the case details indicate tooth number three. So that's the setup, the basic setup for an individual crown, biogeneric individual crown. Um, most crowns essentially are going to be done this way with Emacs or some equivalent. So that's all for that lesson.